What's going on, peeps? It is just after 11, so it's like 23.10, I think, right now. Um, this is a Redemption of Phoenix update. I just got done doing a three-hour stretch from 1933 to 2253, but I had to scratch off 20 minutes since I wasn't doing anything for 20 minutes. Um... It's rough. I'm on the start of 311, and I'm burned the fuck out already. Like, ugh. Like, writing fatigue pisses me off, because, you know, I haven't written anything since December 11th. So it's like... 16 days later. <laughs> I'm burned out. Already. Like... I got 357 pages, just like the gun. <laughs> Um, and up to 116,436 words. I feel good about where I'm at, story-wise, but I hate how long it's taking to get done. Look at the lip hurts. Damn. Uh, I'm just, I'm burned out from this shit, like... And so, me inside, I should be like, man, I want to be done, or I could just stop writing and come back to it at a later date. But I'm trying to get it done, so it's done. But like right now, I'm I've hit the part, I've hit the point where I hate fucking dialogue. I hate dialogue now. Oh god. But as I've discovered in my writing, as I'm evolving, that I have mastered the art of relationship dynamics. Yeah, that bullshit. I hate it. I'm so good at it. I fucking hate it. Like, ugh. Because right now, I'm off of Jaga. Um, en route to Coruscant. And I'm working on Brock's, Brock and Trinity's relationship. Now, if you have been living under a rock and you haven't read my work, uh, Brock and Trinity were a, they were a thing, and since they were apart for what was it, two months and basically almost three months apart, she discovered that she'd fallen out of love with him, and she went and visited Rick, and yada yada yada. She didn't fuck Rick, but. You know. Anyway, so, it's just, it's rough. It's, like, trying to bring their relationship full circle is a pain in my ass. As is any relationship I work on. Ugh. I'm tired. I hate writing. <laughs> I had such a hard time with this shit. Like, I could not, one, I couldn't find my rhythm. And I hate that. If you're a writer, you know exactly what I'm fucking talking about. Or if anything, like if you're if you're a gamer, you're a writer, you're you know you're reading a book, you watch a movie, you try to find your vibe and your rhythm. And I could not find my motherfucking rhythm tonight. I was so pissed, but not like pissed like I was just like I'm pissed. <laughs> Same thing, with my music. I couldn't get into my damn music. I had a hard time with that. I started listening to um, Tory Lanez, his new album, Shy Tape. Yeah, Shy Tape 5, or Chicks Tape 5, whatever the fuck it's called, 5. Something 5, I forget. And, uh, yeah, two of the songs were edited that I downloaded. I'm like, motherfucker, I hate edited music. It throws me the fuck off. I'm like, why the hell is that even made? I got sleep dirt in my eye, and it's irritating me. Ugh. Better. So, yeah. It's been... It's... I hate trying to get back into writing after so long. Because then, you know, you feel the burnout from it. And you try to get absorbed back in. But the burnout's so strong, it's like... Why do they even try this? <laughs> So, maybe... Oh, holy fuck. Man, I'm tired. Maybe, uh... Next year, well, next month, I'll try again. 
see what happens. Give my brain a couple days to wrap around my story again. Because I even sat here uh, five hours ago reading it from where I left off. I was like, okay, I'm absorbed back into my work. You know, Tross isn't on my mind anymore. You know, I'm working on trying to get my shit done that I want to finish, you know, and get, get the whole damn thing published and be done. Man, it is so hard to get the shit done. I hate it. So, the big thing with Brock and Trinity's relationship right now is it's an adjustment. Because, you know, they've been apart for pretty much three months. And, uh, you know, Brock has gone through change, you know, training and stuff. And he's built up muscle and shit. He's, you know, his body's changed. He's got muscle mass now, and it's, you know, it's thrown her off because she was so used to how, uh, you know, casual and lanky he was. So, you know, it's a change for her, and it's a change for them. And this fucking eye of mine, I'm going to gouge it out and <laughs> clean it properly and gouge it back in. Fuck. Oh, my leg. Ooh. My leg, it's stiff, and I have a cramp. Come here. There we go. <clears throat> oh, cracked my foot. That felt good. Uh, so, um, God damn you. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be crashing here in a little bit. Um, anyway, so she's learning to cope with, you know, his body type now and how it looks. And, you know, he feels slightly insecure about that. And it's one of those things that, you know, I've gone through. You know, I, my body has changed a lot. You know, I gained a shit ton of weight. And there was a time when I lost a shit ton of weight. And, you know, it was a lot for me to, you know, accept, you know. Because the most weight I ever lost was 63 pounds. And I had been down to 333. And I was happy at 333. I felt good. I looked good at that. Still big, but I looked good. And it was a huge change for me. Because I hadn't thought I could get... I never thought I'd get that low. And, you know, there I was. I felt good. My clothes fit better. I was more active. I had more energy and whatnot. I was still depressed and stuff. And this was... Seven years ago, give or take. So over seven years, I ended up gaining a lot of that back. And then I lost, <laughs> this is the stupidest part. I literally was at 438 last year, I think. So yeah, I gained 100 pounds. Well, yeah, 105. I gained 105 pounds. Uh, somehow this year, I lost 40 of that, which is strange as hell, because I literally did nothing this year, exercise-wise, aside from, I think that was this year, it might have been last year, did, I was doing, uh, crunches and squats in my bedroom, that was about it, I didn't, and then I was walking back and forth between the high school, the high school, <sighs> the elementary school and my house for sunsets and whatnot. So, yeah, that was helping too. But I didn't really think I'd lost that much. And I got on the scale. It's like, oh, it's 400. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. So, you know, I'm applying what I've gone through and what my friends have gone through. And I throw it in my story. And it comes out so good. And I never experienced that before. I never knew it was so simple to put in, you know, all this shit and have it flesh out so well. And relationship dynamics are something that, you know, I'm still learning. You know, I mean, I've said I've mastered it. Yeah, I've mastered it in writing, but I'm still learning as I'm going. You know, I learn about all kinds of crazy shit. You know, how people have so many weird-ass compromises in a relationship. 
whether it's you know long term, short term, friends with benefits, whatever. Um, so it's a lot to apply to my work, and it's a lot to apply to the characters as well. And all of them are so fucking unique, it's hard to keep up with the shit. You know, it's frustrating. If you have a lot of characters, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're trying to make, uh, fuck off Twitter. If you're trying to make a super multi-layered, multi-dimensional character, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So, I'm gonna get off of here. Fuck that shit. <laughs> Stupid Twitter. Um, yeah, I'm gonna head off of here. Crap, well, I'm gonna chill out and watch TV because I don't feel like doing jack shit. <laughs> so... I gotta clean my bed off and crap. I don't have a whole lot on here, thank God. <laughs> so, that's what I got. That's where I'm at with Redemption of the Phoenix. And 3.11. 3.11. Basically. Well, 3.11. But, you know, call it 3.11. So, yeah. I'll probably pick up on it. Again, maybe first or second week of January. See what happens. Unless the mood hits me earlier and I work on it then. I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> so, until next time, like and subscribe with thoughts and prayers.